folks, Bernard Kapinski here, and welcome to my United States Military Railroad Acquire Line project. In this video, which is a how-to video, and it's the first one we've tried, I'm going to be demonstrating some techniques I use to carve rocks using tools like this, and cast rocks using rubber molds like this, to detail a scene where the railroad cut through a hillside, leaving rock faces on both sides of the tracks. So, let's get started. As far as tools go, my absolute favorite tool for carving rocks is a X-Acto knife with a small chisel tip. That's great for getting in and creating the small facets have on your rocks. I like to use a spatula like this to help mix up the water putty and then apply it on the rocks. I have uh, a traditional sculptor's tool. It has a curved end and a flat end. And this is good for carving some of the bigger crevasses and making some gross features in the rocks. I have two kinds of wire brushes, a fine one, and then a section that I cut from a, a bigger wire brush that I use for scratching in final detail. An old paintbrush for wiping off the dust and seeing what you've got. You'll need a couple buckets to uh, mix your water putty in. And, and actually this one is just to hold my tools. I need bigger ones when I'm doing my final rock carving. So what you see here are the rocks that I carved yesterday. And today what I'll be doing is mixing up some water putty to carve in this area here. And then we'll, we'll make a uh, rubber mold and try to fill in that area. And then we'll hand carve some more stuff down there. Okay, I'm gonna mix up a pile of water putty here with a little bit of water. Some people say add the putty to the water, but I find over the years it just works better if I do it this way. And I just gotta mix it up till it's nice and soupy because we're gonna cast this into a rock mold. So I'll just keep doing this. Okay, you can see that the water putty in here is mixed up. It's pretty soupy. You'll know you've got it mixed up when you don't see any darker streaks uh, coming in the material. Okay, so now what we'll do is the, take the rock mold. The rock mold's been soaking in water really overnight, but I'll wet it again. And you can see it's kind of wet. And I'll take the soupy water putty and just pour it into the rock mold. I can see a few little lumps in there, not too bad. So what we'll that pour, it's already starting to thicken up a little bit, which will expedite the process. You don't want it too soupy. And um, on this particular rock mold has a lot of depth to the features, so it needs a fairly thick layer of uh, putty to cover it up. Okay, so while that's while those are setting up, I still have got a pretty good amount of water putty left and it's starting to congeal. So I'm going to start filling in this rock cut here. Okay, and uh, I bring it right up to the old casting. It's starting to hold its shape pretty well. I've got another little spot right over here that I want to do. I'll put that in there. Notice I'm I'm actually grabbing some of that talus. I don't really want to do that, but okay. We'll do some final shaping with my fingers later. Okay, so we'll putty that in there. Um, I need a little bit right in there where it chipped off. So we'll put a little glob in there. I don't know if you saw that. And uh, probably need a little bit right in there. Let's put some in there. And uh, I'll put a little bit right on the corner here. This will be about the end of the rock mold here. I guess I need some up here because this is still a fairly vertical face. So I'll just put a big glob in there. Notice I'm using this spatula to create some of the gross shapes that I'm looking for. Rock faces tend to have what I call facets, which are flat surfaces, and then as the water gets into the rocks, it freezes and thaws and creates cracks, which creates, basically depending on the rock you're trying to model, a series of flat faces with cracks and crevices and so on. Um, if you're not sure what you're trying to model, it's always good to have a photo, and I did have some photos out of what this scene is supposed to look like. But I've done this now enough times that I know the look I'm going for. And it's basically a sedimentary type rock that's been fairly weathered. 
So it will be um, the wire brush technique is what really gives it that old weathered look. I'm almost done with my water putty out of the bucket here. But the idea here is to use this little this little knife to create the little facets that you get from real rock and do vertically and laterally. And I use a real carving tool like this to actually get the basic, the actual main lines of strata. This is a carving tool that you get at the for clay carving. It comes with two different things. So we'll kind of hog that out a little bit. And you can go back and add, you can add, uh, and you should have some go on angles because they get you get faults. And notice when it cracks off, as it cleaves, it leaves a little bit of texture behind. Not where the knife went in, but where you crack away. And so you want to save some of that texture. Wire brushy thing. And without overdoing it, scratch in some uh, strata lines. Trust the wire brush. Scratch in, scratch in some little lines. Not too many, you don't want to get rid of that texture you just carved in there. Just a little bit of... Um, we stuck them on when they were still kind of uh, wet. Feathered them in a little bit. This is Dorm's Water Putty, which is what I like. And then let's just set those for a while. In the meantime, I'll carve this little area that I just mudded up with the leftover. So this is kind of a cool little overlap right here, but you wouldn't want a smooth edge like that. So you have to use your knife. See, like this is going to make a nice cut right here. So we'll come down. That's a face. That's a facet. And then we'll have... Uh, this just helps me visualize where the strata are going to be. Put a little vertical action there. This is, I actually find this a lot of fun. This is relaxing. This is the fun part of scenery. Doing the thin shells just kind of like work. And then if you look up close, you'll see how as you pick it away, not where the knife goes, but where it cracks, you see like little micro texture in there. And that you want to keep that if you can. See right in there, that little micro texture? Yeah. A little deeper ones like this look good when you put some black wash in here. Then it gives us something to look at. Alright, so we'll get our little detail engraver. Like I said, you don't want to do too much because this is good for like here where it's just trying to blend into un and you don't have enough depth to carve a rock, but you can get some you can get some texture in there with this. That's cool for that. See that line right there? That doesn't look real. I gotta get rid of that line. Oops. And the reason that's doing that is because that wasn't pretty wet before I slapped that on there. So we'll put a new, we'll cover that up later, patch it up. So I'm saying these techniques are very forgiving. If you make a mistake, it's very easy to just go back over it. Let's peel this off. It feels hard. Let's see if it's going to peel without ruining it. Do we wait? You don't want to wait too long because you want to be able to do some touch up carving. But I think we did just right. And I see air bubbles though, unfortunately. But there's a cool rock right there. Yeah, see? Those are cool. So what we want is some of these to match that. So we need to smooth out some of these faces here. Okay, so after about 15 minutes of carving and two rock molds, I put one in here and one over there. And then carving to try to get the existing area to blend in with the rock carving. And notice I modified the casting with some vertical lines and things to try to get them to blend together and disguise the fact that I'm using the same rubber molds over and over. And you can see that this rock face is starting to be complete. I will have to go in and add some more hand carving probably in here. Although you know you can take things like these little clips and hot glue them in if you want to do that, but I don't bother, just hand carve them. And then there's probably another little section that needs to be done over here. But I won't be able to get to that for a couple days, so in the meantime I'm going to show you some other ones that I've already completed.
This is the rock cut at Stoneman Switch. It's on the inside of a curve. It's fairly vertical, but some of these old rock cuts were very vertical because all they had were manpower. They didn't have bulldozers, and so they removed as little rock as possible. This one is based on a photo I had that showed a rock cut where there was rock on the bottom and then loose soil on the top. So I have the hand carved rocks down here and then sort of just loose dirt up here with a little bit of lip showing where the roots and things are holding that topsoil on but the rest of it is eroding down you can see the different colors. In terms of finishing I paint the whole surface with my basic scenic color then I give it various washes and dry brushes to bring out the details. I also will pour the scenic material on there and glue that down to help provide more of a weathered look. You can see that in here where you can see the dirt is actually glued to the rock carvings and that makes it look like a much older rock carving. So you can see underneath the bridge there's a lot of rock carving along that back wall. It's a fairly deep scene here. It's about four feet deep. This face is actually a combination of hand carved areas over here. This particular rock is a urethane casting. And then off in the distance here is actually a rubber rock. You can see it just moves a little bit. A rubber rock that I got at a train show. And then to tie it in, I have hand carved rocks along the bottom. And then over here, I have a hand carved face to tie into this rock. And it's a similar effect on the other side of the bridge where you can see some hand carved stuff in here and then the polyurethane casting. Again, it's dry brushed, sprinkled with the various ground foams, and this scene is not complete yet, but the rock carvings are done up here. Well, I hope you found this video helpful and it shows you some of the techniques I use to hand carve rocks.